Last week, Eric got the idea to place a piece of the ceramic on a magnet to see if it would stick to it. At first, it did, but then the ceramic actually pushed itself away from the magnet. That ability to repel a normal magnetic field is what is known as the Meissner effect. And it's suggested that these ceramics are highly advanced materials called superconductors. I want to try it just for Meissner effect first? Yeah. So you're going to freeze the sample? Yes. Yes. In liquid nitrogen. And what does freezing it accomplish? So in order for the materials that we know of today that are superconducting, they don't become superconducting until they get to the temperature of liquid nitrogen. OK. And uh, so if we cool this down to that temperature, about negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit, and it shows superconducting properties, then we'll know this material is a superconductor. OK. Superconductors are cutting edge materials that scientists are researching and developing today because they can transfer and store energy without losing any of it. And some even believe that they could be used to construct vehicles and spacecraft that actually defy gravity. What the hell is that in the sky? Who knows? Maybe this ceramic material and whatever's in the mesa will get us closer to some answers about all the UAPs we keep seeing on Skinwalker Ranch. So we'll have a magnet. And then on top of that, we'll put this chamber. We'll put the liquid nitrogen there and the sample. Now, if the sample becomes superconducting when it gets cool and it's over this magnet, this thing is going to push the ceramic upward. OK. And so that's what we're looking for here. All right, well, let's do that. Some of our observations on this ceramic material are quite out of step with anything I've ever seen before. We're dealing with something uh, certainly unusual. Um, it is something that appears to be an engineered material. It begs for an explanation. It deepens the mystery of the drill site and of the ranch overall. At this point, I think it's too early to say anything about the origins and the true design intent of this material. Well, that's probably enough to cool it. Well, it'll evaporate pretty continuously. So we just want to make sure there's enough in there to stabilize. Notice how it's still boiling off? Uh-huh. That means that the ceramic itself hasn't reached the temperature of liquid nitrogen. And it's still warmer than the nitrogen, so the nitrogen is boiling away. So when it quits bubbling, then it's the same temperature. Yes. Yeah. It's still boiling away, man. Look at that. We expected the liquid nitrogen to boil for a little while as it cooled the ceramic down. But it was crazy how it just kept boiling. A normal ceramic should have cooled rapidly or even shattered from exposure to such a negative temperature. I am reminded of the thermal mystery with the drilling. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. The fact that that bit appears to have gotten so hot, even to the point of fusing or welding itself, and yet the temperature gauge never registered any kind of climb in the temperatures. Yeah. Eric and Tom were right. The drill bit was nearly welded to the drill rod as it was grinding up against something right at the spot where we found the ceramics in the mesa, which suggests whatever's in there just absorbed the intense heat from all that friction. It is taking longer than I would have expected. Yeah, it's taking a lot longer than I was expecting, right? That's data by itself. That is absolutely data. That just makes no sense to me at all. It does to me if it's like a space shuttle time. 